Hello everyone. Today we will be looking at the last problem of the recent AIME 2022. However, instead of solving the problem in the intended way, I will explain how I managed to get the answer in a completely mathematically accurate way, but actually it is not exactly uh, fully solving the problem. You'll see what I mean when I go through my quote unquote solution. So for this problem, it's a geometry problem. You have two externally tangent circles, omega 1 and omega 2 with centers O1 and O2, and then there's a third circle, capital Omega, passing through O1, O2, and intersects the first circle at B and C, and intersects the second circle at A and D. So suppose AB is 2, uh, O1, O2 is 15, and CD is 16, and we have a convex hexagon here. So find the area of this hexagon. So when I first saw this problem, one of the first things that come to mind is that we can actually break this hexagon up into two cyclic quadrilaterals. The, the dotted line is very suggestive. And actually, we know a formula for finding cyclic quadrilateral, right? So it is actually given by the square root of s minus a, s minus b, s minus c, s minus d, where s is the semi parameter. And we can actually put in the capital R for uh, the bigger radius and small r for the smaller radius. And well, we actually do know all the sides, or at least in terms of uh, the two R. So that is actually quite nice. And so maybe we want to put in some expressions into the square root and see where this leads us. Now, actually, there's, um, as we go along this, you'll see why this is a good idea as well. But firstly, Let's calculate the semi-parameter of the upper cyclic quadrilateral. We have uh, r plus r plus 2 plus 15. And very nicely, we don't even need to solve for the two r's yet to get a semi-parameter. We know that r plus r is given as 15 because it's the same as the length of the dotted line. So we actually know the semi-parameter is 16. Now, so if I put in 16 minus uh, 15, I get 1, 16 minus 2, I get 14, then 16 minus r, 16 minus r, so I get this expression for the top quadrilateral. I can simplify this even further because although I don't know r and r, if I expand this bracket, right, I get 16 square minus 16 r plus r plus r, r, right? And again, we know r plus r, so this is 15. So actually, I can put in 15 here and everything simplifies as just 16 plus the product. So there's actually only sort of one unknown in this area, which kind of makes it very nice. Let me park this aside for now. And let's find the area of the second uh, quadrilateral. So for the second one, again, we have R15, R and 16, and the two R's add to 15. So we know the same parameter without solving for the radius. Again, we substitute in 23 minus uh, 16, 23 minus 15, 23 minus r, 23 minus r. So we get this. And similarly, okay, actually very nicely, we can pull out a copy of 2 outside of the square root and then we get the same 14, which looks very familiar. Then we expand this again to get uh, r plus r over here, which we can substitute as 15. So again, we can write everything in terms of sort of one unknown, which is the product. So if I gather the two areas here, this is actually the area of the hexagon. The only thing we do not know is actually the product, which is the sort of the whole point of solving the problem. We need to find the radius. However, if you are a season taker of the AIME, you realize that there's something very strange about this. There's a square root here and another square root, and you are adding it up, and you won't get an integer unless you actually have a perfect square here and a perfect square here. And the AIME requires answers to be integers from 0 to 999. And usually when they are square roots, AIME will do some very funny thing, which is like you have to write the answer in terms of A square root B over C or something like that. And then you give the answer as A plus B plus C. But no, they didn't request anything like this here, which means that the square roots are really supposed to evaluate to integers. So this greatly, greatly restricts what the product RR can be. Because there's a copy of 14 here, and in order for this to be a perfect square, 
you need the thing, the bracket, to also have a factor of 14. And similarly for the other bracket. And the very nice thing is, both of these, this is 2 mod 14 and this is 2 mod 14. So it means that the product RR must be congruent to 12 mod 14 in order to produce a factor of 14 that allows us to take a to have a chance of even taking a square root that gives an integer. So this really is a very strong condition on RR. And furthermore, RR is not unbounded. There's, there's a cap to it because we know R plus R is 15. So okay, in the very least case, RR can get to very close to zero by having like zero times like something close to 15. But in the upper case, it will be 7.5 times 7.5. So that's like 50 something. So we can just write down all the possible values of RR. And then if we put it into the first value, sure we get a copy of 14, but that's not all. The remaining stuff needs to be square rootable as well. So let's see what happens if we put in. You get 14 square times 2 for the case where RR is 12. Then if you increase, you get 14 square times 3, 14 square times 4, 14 square times 5. And there's only one of these where you can actually take the square root and get an integer. So this means that RR is forced to actually be 40. And very nicely, if you put in RR equals 40 here, you actually get 14 squared times 16, which is also a perfect square. So actually there you have it, you just need to evaluate this expression. 14 times 2, 2 times 14 times 4, this is 14 times 10, which gives you 140. So really, that's all there is to this problem, and I didn't even solve the problem to find the radius or anything, or is I, I think this is really not the intended way. It uses the information that the answer needs to be an integer. So it's sort of like a cheat code, but hope you enjoy this video. If you enjoy it, please hit the like and subscribe button. I think this is uh, something I will really appreciate. So stay tuned and see you soon.